So, uh, hey everyone, my name is Gary Trinder. I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. And today I'm going to show you how you can improve your app security using uh, Dev Proxy. So, we're going to go straight into uh, basically a scenario, right? So, we have a scenario of building an app for, uh, um, uh, for Microsoft 365 got a product support team at Contoso. They're managing uh, products. They use Planner for handling customer queries. Okay, tickets, they're in here every single day, but they want an app to just kind of see, uh, you know, a, a, a glance. Um, what's the, the the things that they, you know, need to keep on, on top of, right? So they've come up with an idea of, hey, we'll build an app, right? We'll build a web page, we'll put this in different places, put it in the office, uh, display it in different places. And uh, they've created this app, okay, which uses Microsoft Graph uh, to go and get the data from Planner. And uh, it's all displayed there. They can get this visual information. It updates because obviously it's connected data uh, directly to Graph. And they've built this, which is great. But the developer that's built it has built it in developer tenant. And when you're a developer tenant, you can do whatever you like. You can, you know, create app registrations. You can add permissions to, uh, to, to your app registration. And you need to get this onto production. And as a developer, you generally do not have access to production. You have to talk to an administrator, be nice, and say, hey, come on, like, I need to create an app registration so that my app can actually access this, this data. And this is where we can find problems because the developer will say, hey, I need these scopes. And the administrator will be like, okay, great, but really? Do you need these scopes? It's like, you know, security is an important thing, right? We don't want to give, uh, you know, want to have apps with permissions with more than what they actually need. So you're in a kind of a situation here as a developer, do you actually know what the minimal scopes uh, are, are needed for your app to actually function? And from a developer standpoint, how can you actually verify that this app is actually using those minimal scopes as well? And then a third thing is once you've uh, identified you know, what the minimal scopes are, you're happy that the app is using those minimal scopes, is over time, this app is going to change. You're going to add more permissions. So how do you prevent the, uh, the, the scope creep on your permissions over time? What I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you how Dev Proxy is going to solve all three of those problems uh, when you're working with you know, apps that are, are, are getting data from uh, Microsoft uh, Graph. So if you've not heard about DevProxy, DevProxy is a developer utility. Uh, maybe you've heard us talk about you know, um, using DevProxy to simulate um, uh, API behaviors like errors, throttling, those kind of things. Um, but one side of DevProxy is that it's actually a really good developer utility that can provide you guidance um, as well, such as, you know, are the scopes that you're using in your app the, the, the most minimal uh, for the request that you're actually uh, issuing? So I'm going to come into uh, our app here. So this is, this is our app. It's just a, uh, a basic HTML page which is issuing uh, requests to Microsoft Graph. So we're using the Microsoft Graph SDK. Uh, we could be sending uh, uh, requests using any uh, HTTP client, but we've chosen to use the, the SDK, making it easier. We get benefits of using you know, the retry mechanisms that are already built into the uh, SDK. And we make a call to Graph, right? And we go and get the task back from, uh, from uh, the, the, the planner. We basically filter things out so we can get the counts and things for the number of high priority uh, tickets that we've got. And then we like render the table with the links back to the, uh, the actual tickets. Okay, so based on this, how do I know uh, what the minimal sc scope is? Okay, so using uh, proxy, we can create uh, config files. We have one called minimal permissions here. And um, so the way that uh, their proxy works is that you give it a config file and that config has plugins inside it. And plugins is kind of like the behavior of, 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 of what features you want uh, to, to use with, with Dev Proxy. With this, we're using a minimal permissions uh, plugin. So it's going to tell us, you know, here's the minimum amount of scopes that you need for the requests from your app. So what we can do is we can send, uh, sorry, we can uh, start Dev Proxy uh, here from the command line. And we can define the config file. So we're using minimal permissions in here. And we say, I want you to watch 
any requests that go to graph. Um, and I want you to record them as well. So we need to put it in recording mode so it actually tracks these and it can basically evaluate based on the request what permissions are actually uh, needed. So let's uh, let's run this. Okay, so we started dev proxy and we're in recording mode. If I go back to my app and then I refresh, stop. Oop, that didn't quite work. Just a second. Let me just uh, close all this down and restart. That was a demo god not uh, working correctly. And it's still running. Never running. Just realized the <laughs> copy and paste, folks. Oh, man. Always make Seven sure that you check. <laughs> <laughs> it's typo. That was the issue. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, let's restart this. Hopefully, yep. Yeah, okay, so we've had a request come through. So we've had the the request issued from our app. I'm going to stop recording. And this plugin has returned and said, hey, task.read is the minimal permissions that you want because you're just reading tasks, right? Brilliant. Okay. So now from a developer standpoint, I know exactly which scope is going to give me uh, like least uh, privilege. Okay. So from a security standpoint, I, I can't get any more lower than uh, than this to for, for my app to actually work. I'm going to stop proxy and we're going to go to the other side now. So instead of checking minimal permissions, we're going to check for excessive permissions. And here we have a, another config file, very similar to the other one there. We're just using a slightly different uh, plugin. Again, we're going to watch on the, uh, the graph requests, and I'm going to hit record again. And let's go back to our app and just run this. And I come back. OK, yep, so it's the same request that's gone through. Let's stop. And now this is slightly different in the fact that it's evaluated the permissions against this one request. So if I had an app that was you know, sending multiple uh, requests, lots of requests, these would all be tracked. And then it would say, based on these requests, here are the minimal permissions that you need. So again, it's saying task.read is the one that you, uh, you actually want. But look, we've actually found this app is not using Task.read at all. In fact, it's using group.readwrite.all. Verification that just running dev proxy against this app, and you know, I could just be an administrator here. Developer could give me a URL to just run thing uh, dev proxy against it. It doesn't have to be running locally on my machine. And um, they can check and verify that that is actually the case. So, from an administrator perspective, this kind of provides a lot of assurance that hey, yeah, actually, this isn't the um, this app is you know using high permissions that it needs, but also that it's using the correct permissions as as well. So if we um, if we go back to our uh, app now. So one of the things that you'll notice we've authenticated, right? And we've been able to quickly just uh, send um, Quests from our our browser to the graph already authenticated. You know we've already got an access token, um, and Dev Proxy is sat in the middle. But this is all very manual, right? I have to run Proxy every single time to check. And I talked about using Proxy to prevent scope creep as well. So here's where we can automate these these checks. And the way that we can automate these checks is by using um, like a an end-to-end -end testing tool, so like Playwright, for example, where Playwright can basically interact with the page and do the clicking around to generate the requests. And Proxy can sit there in the middle, capture those requests, and then give a, a report. Um, one of the other things that Proxy can do is it's a really good mocking tool as well. So at the moment, 
every request is actually going to Microsoft Graph. We can use Dev Proxy to sit in the middle so that we can actually mock these, these requests. We have a plugin here called the Mock Generator plugin, uh, which we can use to, uh, to, to generate these, uh, the, these mocks and create uh, mock files. So in here, I have a, a number of mock files. I have a graph mock file. So this is the, the graph request that we've already seen. And here is the data that can be returned. So from our testing point of view, we know that we're always going to get the same data back so that we can write our tests. You know, we don't have to deal with changing, um, uh, changing values. Um, and we can also mock authentication as well. So in here, we're actually, uh, we're, uh, mocking uh, the access token um, and the authorization as well. So the whole flow can run offline, which means if we're running everything offline, we can use Playwright to, to do that, um, uh, that testing without actually hitting graph. Uh, which is really, really useful. Uh, another thing as well that we can do is not just uh, HTTP requests, but we can also mock uh, images as well. So we have image mocks. Uh, in here, I'm actually using a placeholder service. So again, this isn't running on my machine, um, but from a testing point of view, I, I want these images to, to appear so that my tests are, are correct. So I've actually uh, mocked these as well, used the, uh, the, the plugin um, from uh, the, from Dev Proxy uh, to generate these mocks and also get the, the files. So we have our SVG files in here as well. So that means that what we can do is we have another config file here, which does quite a lot. So I'm going to step through this. So this plugin will uh, it will mock authentication, it will mock graph, uh, it will mock our image requests as well. It will also run the minimal permissions guidance plugin, and then we have a reporter as well. So before um, we saw that the output was just in the console, we don't really want that because you know we want a, a, a nice document. Say something in Markdown is nice and easily shared. You can commit that to uh, you know some kind of source control if you wanted. Use the previews, um, and in here it's uh, a little bit more involved. So what I can do is I can just run dev proxy beta uh, record to set um, dev proxy um, into recording mode using uh, this this config. So it'll be doing the the mocking as well. Just make sure. Right. Yep. Okay. So we've got everything uh, loaded in here, and it's in recording mode. Right, OK, so now I mentioned I'm using Playwright to automate these tests. So I have a test here. Uh, very simply, it's going to go to the, uh, the, the landing page. Uh, it's going to it's going to log in. So there's a login step, which I didn't actually show just yet. Um, so you know, if you've been to an app that logs you in using uh, Microsoft Entry, you'll usually see in the pop-up, you put your user details in, and then you, know, you get access to the app or even consent to the permissions as well before you use the app. Um, and then what it will actually do is it'll just make sure that, yeah, we've actually got something on the page, and we know that this is going to generate a, a request. So if I go to my uh, test explorer here, I'm going to run my test. So there the test has uh, passed. And if I go to the terminal, look, you can see all these requests that have come through that have passed through proxy. Proxy has mocked everything. And I can now stop this and we get a report. So now in here we have a markdown file which gives us the information for our minimal permissions report. So it, again, it tells us exactly the same information, which are the minimal uh, scopes that we need, which are the permissions on the token, and which ones we, you know, we don't actually need. Uh, just to note, profile, open ID, and email are added by the MSAL client. We don't actually request these. These just come uh, on the token uh, by rights. Uh, we're looking to remove these from the report um, uh, as, as we go along, um, but it's highlighting the fact that we have a problem here. We need to fix that. We need to go into the code and, and change that and change our permissions as well. Now, that's all well and good. Again, it's a bit manual because I have to do this on my machine. If I'm working in a team, I want to make sure that we don't uh, commit code uh, that is uh, using um, permission or 
to higher privileged uh, scopes than they're actually needed. What's great about this is you can use Dev Proxy and Playwright in um, CI/CD. So I have a GitHub uh, workflow here, which will run uh, when I push code, or I can run it manually. Um, and what this does, this will go through and it will set up Playwright and it will um, set up Dev Proxy, and it will run the same test as what I've done here uh, locally, and then it will give us a summary output. And just to show you what that looks like is if we go to this GitHub repository, you can see here is one that I ran earlier. Um, so here we have our summary report actually shown in the actions as well. Now, we've not decided to create any warnings or, or things like that, but we could easily do that, right? We could uh, say, you know, run this on a pull request. Uh, you've added some code in there. Uh, it's using these scopes. You shouldn't be using them. You should reduce the, 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 uh, uh, the permission uh, scope. Um, but you can see how it's a nice way of basically being able to use uh, the tools that you already maybe use, like Playwright for end-to-end -end testing, and then introduce Dev Proxy uh, into the middle of that uh, testing process to make sure that your apps are more secure um, going forwards and using the, the, the right levels of uh, permissions. Um, and what would be great as well is, you know, the report is something that you can just send to your administrator. Um, you can highlight this in your documentation. It's a nice, easy way of being able to just find here are the scopes that we need rather than having to go through all the documentation to find all the different uh, requests that you might be uh, issuing and then manually uh, going and finding that. Um, so just head back. Um, so everything that I've talked about today is, is public. It's in our uh, documentation. Um, we do have a release coming uh, on Thursday, which is our 019 release. We have a few um, uh, updates um, that are coming um, that, um, that, that improve this, uh, uh, this, this feature. Um, so if you're wanting to test it, now use the beta um, version of proxy and you can go through the uh, the, the, the getting started tutorial which will run you through through how to install it how to use it how to install the uh, the beta versions as well but uh, if you're happy to wait wait around till Thursday and it will be released uh, in our stable version um, with that David back to you. Thank you.